Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this is uh, the friendly Shackleton. In the last uh, few weeks, there's been a lot of climate change reports, very dire and grim reports. There's been the Lancet report on health, the effects of climate change on health, mostly. There's been the National Climate Assessment report from the U.S. about a week ago. There's been greenhouse gas reports, both on the levels in the atmosphere and also on the greenhouse gas emissions, the gap between where we are right now, where we're heading, business as usual, versus the very, very distant targets of keeping global temperatures to 1.5 or 2 degrees even. Um, you know, the probability of doing that is getting less and less. Uh, some, many people are saying that that's impossible. There's been also, you know, other reports uh, from individual countries like the UK, for example, on um, Arctic sea ice, you know, major reports. So I'm going to delve into, into some of these, uh, touch on some of these briefly, and in future videos I'll probably get into more detail on some more. And of course this is following on the um, IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Report, SR 1.5, on, you know, is there any chance of, of reaching or staying within the 1.5 degrees Celsius guardrail temperature? And that was set in Paris, basically, the 1.5 and 2 degree temperatures were talked about in Paris as, as targets, global targets, to keep that the temperature within, within that temperature rise relative to pre-industrial. And um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, these and, uh, and more. Of, um, okay, so basically, okay, so this is my Twitter feed at Paul H. Beckwith. And there's, a, there's an article that came out in Forbes. Um, just uh, very, very, within the last few days, few hours, in fact. Okay, so, and it's at, near the top of my Twitter feed at the moment. So it's basically a simple guide to all the scary and depressing climate change news at the moment. Just came out November 29th. Okay, so, basically, it gives links to all of these reports or most of them that I'm going to talk about. So we reached, uh, we've reached record levels of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This is according to the World Meteorological Organization, okay, which has a new report. So in 2017, we, fit, we hit 405.5 parts per million, and that increased from 403.3 in 2016. Okay, so that was a rise of 2.2 parts per million. And then in 2015, it was 400.1. So the rise from 2015 to 2016 was 3.2 parts per million. Okay, so the levels of greenhouse gases are going up at a very fast rate. And even and now they're, you know, we, we've, we've passed over 410. That's uh, not an average number. That's, you know, specific readings, um, and this is in the middle of the Pacific um, at the CO2 uh, observatory in Mauna, on Mauna Loa. Okay, now you have to remember that these levels are going up so fast right now, it's actually, you know, is it 10 times faster, 50 times faster than at any period in Earth's history previously. So the last time the Earth the last time we had this much CO2 in the atmosphere was three to five million years ago. Now, remember, so back then, when the temperature was rising to these high levels, it took much, much longer than it's taken now. And in fact, the atmosphere and oceans could respond and things could equalize to those temperatures. So a temperature of two to three degrees Celsius warmer and sea level rise was 10 to 20 meters higher than now. Okay, so that's the last time we were at these CO2 levels. So what that means is we've raised these levels so high so quickly 
that the Earth system has not been able to respond. And even if we stopped all emissions now and maintained these CO2 levels, it would take a long time for them to be removed from the atmosphere to lower the levels. So meanwhile, the temperature is going to be rising rapidly and the sea level is going to be continuing to rise. So logically, the only way to avoid these, these things is to not only slash fossil fuel emissions, zero fossil fuel emissions, but we also have to reduce them. And the lofty goal of the Healthy Climate Alliance, you can Google Healthy Climate Alliance, is to restore a healthy climate and to get CO2 levels down to about the 300 parts per million level by 2050. Now, you'd say this is impossible, but I highly encourage you to have a look on the website for the Healthy Climate Alliance. We need to set goals that we think will restore and stabilize the climate. Once these goals are set, then we can put all of the best minds together of scientists and engineers on the planet to figure out a way to figure out, you know, technologies and even, you know, biomimicry uh, to increase carbon sinks, um, you know, use all different anything and everything that we can think of to restore a healthy climate. So you can have a look at that website, Healthy Climate Alliance. Okay, now the global emissions, okay, it paused for about the last three years. Okay, in 2017, global CO2 emissions rose. It was the first time they rose in four years. You know, that's very disappointing, very concerning, because the pause in emissions growth happened while the global economy kept growing. So we were starting to decouple economic growth from greenhouse gas emissions, or we thought, but no, we, we weren't. They're still going up in the atmosphere all this time, I should say. So even though the emissions paused, the levels in the atmosphere didn't pause. And uh, one cause, it says, is or contribution is Amazon deforestation. It hit its highest level in a decade between August 2017 and July 2018. The rate is still far slower now than it was in the 80s and 90s, but it started to accelerate again. And this is a problem, you know, with the leadership in Brazil, for example, you know, wanting to exploit the rainforest. This is going to cause global, global implications. Now, the United Nations Environmental Program, um, they had their emissions gap report comes out every year. You know, they say what we need to limit, how, how much we have to cut our emissions to limit climate change to either two degrees or 1.5. And there's an enormous gap. So it says here, to limit warming to two, nations will need to triple their efforts from what we currently are. So this is one of the things there'll be a lot of negotiation at, at the COP24, which is starting very soon in Katowice, Poland. So the, the Met Office, the, US, the UK Met Office, had, a, had their, a report on their climate projections, talking about UK and warning about UK summers being 5.4 degrees warmer by 2070 than they were in 81 to 2000. And, you know, how much, you know, how, how, how these uh, heat waves will affect people. So there's an extensive report. And there's another Met Office report talking about the hottest day in the UK and so on. Now, the big thing for the US is the Fourth National Climate Assessment, which looks at the risks to American society. Okay, and it talks, it puts things in economic dollars. So this is, even though it's a US government report, many of the authors are saying that it wasn't, um, that the writing that went into the report wasn't modified by the present US government. You know, this is an extensive report, many, many people writing it, many scientists reporting it. You can't dismiss it and say, I don't believe it. That doesn't make sense. And then the Lancet, Okay, the Lancet um, Medical Journal um, looked 
had a, had a new study, an extensive new study out. And the, you know, it looked at the proportion of global population vulnerable to heat-related death and disease from higher temperatures, okay? More and more people are living in cities. There's urban heat island effects. Cities are generally warmer than the countryside um, by, you know, up to even like three degrees, four degrees Celsius. There's lots of concrete and black surfaces in cities. They warm faster than rural areas. There's no trees around to cool them. In 2017, 157 million vulnerable people were exposed to heat waves globally and 153 billion hours of labor were lost to heat waves. People can't work outside efficiently during these heat waves. There was a new report on the changing Arctic here, again by the UK, by the Environmental Audit Committee, you know, talking about the profound changes in the Arctic and so on. Okay, um, so let's have a look in some more detail at these Okay, so the greenhouse gas levels. So this is the World Meteorological Organization. So if you just click on those links in this previous article, you can come to these links. I'm gonna show you a number of them. So greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere reached a new record. Okay, so talked a little bit about this. Um, okay, but what I do wanna show you is is I want to show you this plot here. Okay, so there's key findings on CO2. So CO2 is, you know, in 2017, it reached 405.5 ppm, which is 146% of the pre-industrial level, about 280 parts per million. Um, the growth rate is increasing. There was a huge record growth between 2015 and 2016 due to the strong El Nino. Lots of droughts, therefore there were the sinks. The vegetation in forests did not absorb as much CO2. Okay, uh, methane is getting larger and larger. The component is about 17% of the radiative forcing. 40% of methane is still emitted from the atmosphere by natural sources like wetlands, termites are a big emitter. 60% comes from cattle breeding, you know, from anthropogenic human activities, cattle breeding, rice agricultural, fossil fuel exploitation, fracking, landfills, biomass burning, etc. And it's up 257% compared to the pre-industrial level you know, about 750 or so, and it was 1859 in 2017. And the nitrous oxide is also very strong, coming from both natural, 60%, and anthropogenic, about 40%. Um, and that's like the ocean, soil, biomass burning, fertilizer use, various industrial processes. Okay, so this is a key plot here, which you may have seen. So. I've showed this type of thing before. So we've got CO2 rising here, we've got methane rising here, and we've got nitrous oxide rising here. Um, according to these curves, okay, methane paused and then started to uptick here. These others are slowly bowed up curves, meaning the, the rate is accelerating. If you take these, now the slope of these curves, which is known as a derivative, is shown here. Um, so this is a, basically this is the yearly change. So here's the, the record yearly change for CO2 was 3.2 parts per million in that 2015, 2016. Okay, now if you draw a line through here, you can clearly see the trend going up here. This is the methane, the rises where the, the curve was increasing here, flattened out here, so the slope, so the yearly rise went to close to zero and below zero a few years here. And then there was a strong uptick tick in 2007 here. And this is nitrous oxide. So the trend is increasing for all of these greenhouse gases. Okay, so these are levels that are measured in the atmosphere. I would say the most important, these are some of the most important graphs. Unless humanity can bend these curves over and actually have them drop, we're in for a heap of trouble. Thank you.